Hello friends and family and welcome to the Wednesday, September 30th edition of our Boring Meditation Stuff. Yesterday I was talking about economics and um, the idea that an economics, uh, a system of economics, should be more nuanced than um, reducing every human endeavor, every human interaction to uh, to the financial world. And I realize when I say it that way, it sounds uh, heretical. <laughs> um, I think another way to think of this is from the other angle completely. So we can think about our own personal economics, our own personal wealth, finances, cash flow. And I have had this thought um, recently while sort of thinking about and researching um, the monastic practice. So the Buddhist monastic order, um, one of the, there are a few fun, really fundamental requirements, um, regardless of, of which sort of sect you belong to. Um, and for the large part, um, Buddhist monastics belong to one sect or another. Um, one is uh, celibacy, complete celibacy. So um, this other term for a monk or a nun, brahmacharya, um, essentially means that, essentially means that they are celibate. Um, so that's, these things are synonymous in places like here in India, um, the Buddhist countries. Uh, in the West, I think it's a little more confused. Um, I've heard the term celibate monk <laughs> used before as if that isn't uh, redundant. Um, but this is sort of the foundation. And um, then from there, homelessness is really the next big target. So you are not allowed to have anything or take anything with you. Um, you can, I think, carry some real essentials, right? Uh, in the razor you shave your head with. Probably not the rotary type that I've been using during the <laughs> during um, quarantine haircut season, but um, some sort of simple blade, maybe a toothbrush. I don't know what a monk is allowed to carry. But there's this idea that I've been pondering, which is that uh, in essence, we are all that. Um, we are all that. <laughs> we all have those same characteristics. So we can sort of carry these few simple things with us. We may store them in places. We may store them in our car. We may store them in our house. Um, but ultimately, the destiny of all our possessions and the destiny of ourselves um, is the same of that of the monks. So ultimately, it will all perish. Um, our car will rust and disintegrate into nothing. We will die and rot and our bones will crumble. Um, and one way or the other, we lose everything or everything loses us. And in that sense, um, there's an idea that the householder's life is actually much more difficult than the monk's life as far as one's meditation practice is concerned. And I think that this is almost in, inherently true. Um, the monk, the nun, is given all time for meditation. Um, they have no worldly concerns. They don't have a job. They don't have a role in the economy. Um, and yet, they still have 
the fundamental worldly concerns that we all do they still have to brush their teeth they still have to sleep at some point they still need to eat food they still need to drink water and um, this in and of itself is a, a participation um, in the economy and so theirs is just drastic, drastically reduced and ours is how we're, we sort of work the opposite way. Our participation in the economy is maybe as big as we make it. <laughs> so if we want to become the next trillionaire, um, we push to... Is Jeff Bezos a trillionaire or is he just mega billionaire? I don't know. But um, we can push and we can push and we can take more and take more and be more involved in the lives of others. Um, generally, the way that you do that through capitalism is by taking more, but I mean, some businesses provide more value than others. None provides the amount of value required to become a multi-billionaire, I don't think. Um, none of the corporations that I've seen on planet Earth seem to do that, but um, but there is this possibility of working outward, getting more, acquiring more, being more. And the monk or the nun is really working in the other direction. They're, they're reduced to a bare minimum set. So, okay, I still need a toothbrush. Oh, okay, I still need a place to sleep even if that's just under a tree. Um, and we are, in the same sense, operating with the same constraints. When it comes to our meditation practice, when it comes to our set of distractions, they're really not so different from the monks or the nuns. Ours are more expansive. We can allow our greed and our imagination and our cravings to take us outward. Um, and sometimes we indulge that. We think, oh, I would like to have this. Oh, this person has this thing. I would like to have that also. But we don't have to. And it is often these sorts of thoughts that are the most interruptive in our meditation practice and that is i think why the life of the householder the the life of the lay person is described as being dusty and dirty and <laughs> noisy and complicated because it is um, our lives have a lot of extra things going on in them we have a lot of extra baggage and there's a common misinterpretation, and this was a misinterpretation of my own um, early on in life as a young adult. Um, when I say young adult, I mean an actual young adult, 20-something, not 12. Um, young adult as in voting age, not young adult as in young adult fiction. <laughs> um, I went through multiple phases where I thought, oh, if I just, if I give everything away, if I, if I get rid of all my belongings, that'll solve the issue. And then I'll have cleansed myself of desire and attachment um, and all of these ideas. And of course it doesn't work. And oh, okay, I gave away my couch, but now I don't have a place to sit. Yeah, I guess I'll buy another couch. Um, the lay tendency is really not external at all it doesn't really matter very much what we own or what sort of things we own um, and in fact our possessions don't really dictate our negativity toward them our attachment toward them 
hypothetically, there could be a person who lives a comfortable life in a large house with many vehicles and all sorts of things, and that if all those things went away tomorrow, they wouldn't even really notice that, oh, okay, like, now the circumstances of my life have changed, but I'm still moving forward on whatever path I was moving on. This is more common, though, um, in those who have less contentment, that whatever we have, that that is enough and that we're happy with that and that if there is a good reason to have more that we might pursue more but that we're not constantly craving and longing for more um, and it's very hard to do when <laughs> as a householder we're given the permission to own more and buy more and earn more and save more and all of these sorts of things um, but at our core, we are the same. We are all essentially monks and nuns, um, at least as far as the homelessness part of the equation is concerned. Our house may get blown away in a storm, more so these days than, than normally. It may get burnt in a fire. <laughs> um, who knows, our country may go to war. All sorts of strange things might happen. And we may lose everything before we die. That is a real possibility. And those who can be okay with that idea will generally um, not struggle so much. And it is this kind of proximity <laughs> to monkhood, um, perhaps, to a monastic life which um, gives those sorts of people that flexibility. I'm not saying that I have this flexibility, by the way. I'm very attached to many things. So. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough for Wednesday. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope you're taking good care of yourselves and taking good care of everyone around you. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.